of those two children, stakeholders, multi best practice reviews, multi-agency. I don't know, it's all concerning. It seems to be the jargon or the lingo, doesn't it? That's later in the show. But back now to our conversation about the Prime Minister's contrition yesterday as the Sue Gray report came out. And let's bring into the conversation Steve Barclay, who is a Conservative MP, uh, Minister for the Cabinet Office and Chief of Staff at Number 10, one of the people brought in in, in the shake-up, the, the revolution, if you will, in the aftermath uh, of those events. And he joins me now. Um, good to have you on, Minister. Uh, when uh, uh, Party morning, Marty says, good morning, sir. When Party Marty says of some of the events, we got away with it. Has the Prime Minister got away with it? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Well, he commissioned this, this review. I think he is a very humbled by uh, the findings. That's why Nicky went to the House of Commons uh, to set out uh, a detailed response uh, to it. And uh, as the report itself recognises, has made significant changes uh, in the wake of that. You just referenced uh, in terms of myself, but much wider changes, a new permanent secretary, a new principal private secretary. That was the role of the person you just referred to, uh, a new director of communications uh, and so forth. And, and that is recognised in the report that there has been significant change in Downing Street since these events. Can you give me, more importantly, my listeners, an ironclad guarantee events like this will never happen again? I'm very confident in, in that, Nick. Obviously, the, the whole pandemic and the context it was a hugely challenging time, but I know it was for your listeners that you and I have talked uh, on the show, and uh, and particularly, you know, when one thinks of of uh, those who lost relatives uh, and couldn't go to funerals. As a constituency MP, that was, you know, the particularly the heartbreaking uh, stories that that I would get as a, a constituency MP, and and I know that will have been in the mind of a number of your listeners uh, listening to the statement and and reading uh, the report yesterday, and I, I'm extremely conscious, Nick. Uh, of that uh, and that's why we made the changes uh, I think the Prime Minister said yesterday how humbled he had been he personally went uh, and spoke to staff in Nimba 10 uh, to personally apologise uh, for some of uh, the things that have come out uh, in the report but we, all, we also have made uh, changes in light of those findings He did say he was humbled he said he bears responsibility normally if you bear responsibility you take action, you stand down why isn't he? Well, he has taken action, and I, I just no. Set but why is he standing there? He says he bears responsibility. So he is. He bears responsibility. I would suggest possibly a great deal of the responsibility. Why doesn't he therefore offer his resignation? Well, as I say, he has taken action. He has um, made significant changes. He himself personally went to, to the House of Commons to, to set out uh, this. He himself commissioned uh, this uh, report. But also, I think it, it is important to, to, to also uh, recognise for, for many of the staff in Downing Street during that time that they were part of, of getting the fastest vaccine rollout uh, in Europe. They were for, uh, part of the fastest uh, growth uh, last but year uh, in the economy. They were also part uh, they of the biggest law-breaking address in the whole of the country, of course. No, no, I accept, Nick, and, mm. and as I say, I absolutely accept that. But I, I think just in the, the interest of balance, I wasn't there at the time, no. but I'm just saying Do that you... people during that time did work extremely yes. hard, as they did across the country, Indeed. not just in Downing Street, but they did work hard and they did get many of the big decisions right uh, during the pandemic. Here's the thing, Minister. Many of my listeners find it difficult to believe he didn't know what was going on. I appreciate hundreds of, indeed, the Prime Minister gave us, I think, the square footage of the offices and how many hundreds of people right there. But here's the thing. I don't know if you're a dad, but I am. If my son's swing set was broken, I'd want to find out why and how. And when I was told it was work colleagues having a late night jolly, I'd take action. Why didn't he? Uh, I think it's a very fair question, and, and I am a dad, and, and so oh. I absolutely get the So the, if your son or daughter, analogy. I don't know what you have, or you go out and you uh, say, hello, each, son. But, oh, you've got uh, one of each? Yeah. OK, well, congratulations. <laughs> well done. OK, my love, or hello, my young man. What's happened to the swing? Oh, well, some of your workmates came round, Daddy, had a few beers and a sing-song and trashed it. Wouldn't you want to know yeah, more? I, I, it's a really, really good uh, question because well, I think like it to goes to the heart of. Well, let me go. just come, up, come. Let me come on to that. So, go so on. firstly, a, a number of these incidents took place when the prime minister wasn't even there when he was at Chequers, uh, for example. Uh, secondly, in terms of. The difference, and the report brings that this out, there's a difference, as far as the Prime Minister was cons concerned, between going to Synthin for a few minutes in, in the course of what a Prime Minister does, meeting after meeting after meeting throughout a day, where he goes from one meeting to another. That is obviously very different than long after he had gone or when he wasn't even in Downing Street, uh, staff uh, continuing drinking late into the night. So, that, so, you know, to your question, it is a big place. Some of these incidents applied when he wasn't even physically there. 
Uh, and clearly, as prime minister, the nature, of, under all prime ministers, of their job is one of intense workload, where they're going from meetings to meetings, uh, and they're often simply uh, at these things for, for a very short period of time. All right. A couple of last questions. Prior to your promotion to effectively the enforcer at number 10, you were very senior indeed. You were number two in the Treasury. What do you imagine we're going to hear later today from your former boss and your colleague, Rishi Sunak? What help is going to be provided to people who are down there on Struggle Street, Minister? Well, what I know, uh, having, as you say, worked very closely uh, with Rishi Sunak, that uh, uh, he recognises that a lot of your listeners uh, are facing uh, challenges in terms of the cost of energy, the cost uh, of food, uh, and the wider cost uh, of living, uh, the consequence, obviously, of uh, the over £400 billion that's been spent through COVID, the, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, the post-COVID uh, shocks, and that is really feeding through, and we really get this in government, that it is feeding through into the household budgets uh, of listeners. So, so what the Chancellor will set out is the targeted measures that we will take, recognising in the off gem guidance that came out this week that those costs, particularly on energy, are going to, to increase. So, so he'll set out in the Chamber how the government, just as he did uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, how the Chancellor will ensure that there is targeted support to those families, recognising the very significant challenges that we face across the country, given the high cost of energy and the costs of COVID. Last couple of things. Um, is it a good idea that Martin Reynolds, Party Marty, is off to be Britain's next ambassador to Saudi Arabia, given the fact that he's a man who likes a party and a glass of wine? That could end in a rather ugly fashion, Minister. Well, I, I don't think, Nick, and this has always been the case under successive governments, that ministers should get into commenting on, on sort of the HR practices. Or for, well, I could see sending him to Dublin, but Saudi Arabia is a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Well, as I say, I'm not going to get into to the comments. I mean, most of the people named in the report have actually left uh, the civil service. In terms of anyone within the report, then then it's not for me as a minister to start commenting on But how do you imagine the people you must work with in Riyadh will view that? He was the well, great party organiser. You know, I, think, I think, firstly, people were working extremely hard in Downing Street. So I mean, what did you do in, uh, in London, uh, Mr Reynolds? Well, I, in fact, I was in charge of getting in the wine and the parties. Oh, that'll sit well in Riyadh, won't it? But as I say, I think it mischaracterises the, the okay. bulk of what was going on in, in terms of Downing Street and the, and the massive work that went on in terms of getting the vaccine out. Uh, will the Prime Minister lead the Conservatives into the next general election, Mr Barclay? Yes, I believe he will, Nick. I'm grateful for your time. Good luck with your children's swings. Conservative MP and Minister for the Cabinet Office, Steve Barclay, appearing here on LBC one minute after eight. News headlines are next. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at eight o'clock, the Chancellor is expected.